Believe in yourself, cause it starts with you And then everyone else will believe you too And if it looks like you're the only believer around Just keep on believing, don't put yourself down Just believe Our guest this week grew up in Lebanon Emigrated to America at age 22 And earned a doctorate in law from Wayne State University Fluent in four languages, she is the only woman in Michigan who owns a personal injury law firm. She is the queen of legal advertising, and we all know her from her ads on billboards and transit buses. Her name, Jumana Kairos, and we're honored to have her as our guest. And I'm Jack Prasula, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. I'm Jack Prasula. This is Anything is Possible. And we're talking to Jumana K. Rose, who's the only woman in Michigan who owns a personal injury law firm. Jumana, welcome. A real honor to have you. The pleasure is mine, Jack. Hello and hello to everybody. Can we start by talking about your parents and your childhood? My parents, the best mom and dad in the world. My mom is still alive. My dad died about 26 years ago. I had what a lot of people would call an idyllic childhood. Very nurtured, very loving parents. Um, Very proud to say that I grew up in a very, very Christian home uh, where Christian values were exercised. I am the youngest of four children. I am the youngest of uh, three older brothers, and I'm the only girl. And uh, remind me later on in the show to tell you what, you know, how that was a fuel or part of the fuel to my success when I wanted to prove my mom wrong, who told me about my brothers. And I said, I'll show you. I'm going to outdo my three brothers. (laughs) I don't know that I did, but I certainly certainly, uh, told her that. And uh, it was a very, very loving environment. It was a very stable environment. Um, They focused, in addition to the values, the Christian values, um, their their number one focus was on education, Jack. Each and every one of my brothers holds a doctorate degree, my three older brothers and myself. And so uh, my parents, being a parent myself, I know how hard it is to raise children and, you know, to see them through successful education. So my hat is off, particularly to my mom, because my dad, Jack, was in the army and relied on this very powerful, truly powerful woman who had a lot of wisdom, who knew what she was doing, who had her priorities straight with her family. And so this woman, who is still alive, I'm very blessed to say, has managed to raise four doctors. You emigrate to America at age 22. Yes, sir. And then you Are you going to ask me now when was no, that? No, 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 no. You want me to reveal my age? <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> uh, and then you earn a master's degree in ethics from Yale. Yes, sir. How was it you came to America and what did you bring with you? Oh, I brought with me, I heard about something called the American dream. I brought a vision of that with me here. And I tried to live it. Um, What more can I tell you? This land is truly, Jack, the land of opportunities. How far you go is up to you. And how little you travel is really up to you. In this beautiful, blessed country, you have no excuses not to succeed. No excuses. This is what I brought with me. A very hungry, very driven young woman who heard about the American dream and wanted to live it. You get the master's in ethics from Yale, and then you get a doctorate in Juris Doctor degree from Wayne State University. Yes, sir. Jumana, how was it you decided to go into the field of law? The truth is, Jack, ever since I was a young uh, girl, people would tell me, Jumana, you need to be a lawyer. You are very argumentative and you are very persuasive and you tire us out. But... Growing up, I was a pre-medical student, and I was already accepted into medical school. And there was a change of events. I met my 
then husband. And uh, he was accepted at Yale University. He is one of the most brilliant genius men I have ever met to this day. That's my ex-husband, the father of my two daughters. And we both came and he was accepted at Yale University. And when I came into this country and I saw the power of the law here and how people have rights, how people have basic constitutional rights, I realized that what I wanted to be is a lawyer. I didn't want to be a doctor. He, he was a surgeon. And he was working at the time, Jack. Doctors used to go on call three nights in a row and then come home on the fourth night until that fatality happened because of medical error in, uh, I believe, New York at the time uh, by the hands of a, um, a resident. And they changed the rules on that. So, you know, s seeing the power of the law here and what you can do to make humanity better and to make things better for people, I, I think then I wanted to do, I think what I was meant to do, which is become a lawyer. And I have never regretted it since, never. We're talking to Jumana K. Rose. When we come back, we'll ask her how it was she decided to start her own law firm. And I'm Jack Rasula, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. I'm Jack Prasula, and we're with Jumana K. Rose. Jumana, it's one thing to become a lawyer. It is a whole different thing to become the first woman in Michigan who owns a personal injury law firm. How was it you ever decided and started your own firm? Let me make a, a bit of a clarification. I am not the only woman who owns a personal injury law firm. I'm the only woman who owns a major personal injury law firm consisting of tens and tens and tens and tens of employees. You will find other women who may have one, five employees, but you will not find in the state of Michigan a woman that has 60 or more employees. So that makes me, yes, sir. How was it you decided to start it? When I graduated from law school, I had the honor of joining Harry Philo, the mighty Harry Philo. Harry Philo, God rest his soul, just recently passed, was one of the, in my opinion and the opinion of many others in the legal field, one of the top 10 legal minds this country has ever known, period. He is considered to be the father of personal injury the father of product liability. He talked about using the law to improve the workplace and to make things and conditions safer for people. He always said that the purpose of the law is for the prevention of injury. And Jack, when that fails, then money compensation. I had the biggest honor of having a job with him. And within four short months, which is totally unheard of, it takes normally years, I was made partner. Um, Shortly after I joined, maybe about two years ago, two years into it, excuse me, I um, the firm broke and I decided to leave and I decided to go on my own. I, I wanted to be, I wanted to break grounds. I wanted to break the ceiling. I, you know, when people would say why, I would say why not. And what, how, when they would say how, I would say God will show me the way. So I wanted to go on my own. When, when Harry Filo was no longer part of the firm, that's when I decided to create a law firm, which Jack, I created out of thin air. And when I say thin air, it was literally thin air. And ask me how, I'll tell you how. How? Well, about 11 years ago, give or take, you know, I decided that I was going to go on my own. I was not going to work for anybody. I had Jack no clue where the first case would, case would come from. I had no clue how to work up a case from A to Z because at the Philo law firm, it was such a sophisticated national law firm. We had paralegals doing this and legal secretaries doing that and whatever. I purchased a computer and a printer and a desk. And I sublet space from one of our finest attorneys, Wayne Miller. And 
I decided I'm going to sit. I'm going to give it a try. I had no clue, Jack, where the first case would come from or how, would, how, how I would go about it. I couldn't even figure out how to connect the computer to the printer to the... To the <laughs> I mean, that was such a challenge for me. But here is what I had. I had faith in God. And I pray every day for my faith to increase. And I think it is. But even back then, my faith in God was such that all I needed was to ask him for help and he would reveal the path. And that is exactly how it started. I really had nothing. I didn't walk into my father's law firm, into my husband's law firm, into my cousin's law firm, into my brother's. I created a firm that is now considered the second largest personal injury firm in the state of Michigan about 11 years ago out of thin air. I remember the first time that the phone rang and I got a case out of it. It was a case that was rejected. I remember it to this day. It was $50,000. And, and you know, I started building on that success. I quote you now. Yes. You regularly say, God is my CEO. You bet. Let me tell you. Please. God is really my CEO. People have asked me uh, lately, uh, maybe in the past few years, how do you do it? Who advises you? Uh, who are your, who's your team? Where do you get your ideas? And until very recently, where I really had no marketing team, I was the marketing team. And God was my CEO. And to this day, God remains my CEO. I'll be very honest with you, Jack, and I don't know how some of your listeners will take it. Being a woman in a heavily male-dominated profession, and might I add, a heavily male-dominated field, the field of personal injury. Being a foreigner with an accent, looking perhaps not terribly lawyerly, I was not taken seriously. And I would go to some of my colleagues and I would ask for advice. And Jack, nobody gave me advice. I'd ask for the simplest things, the smallest tips. I was trying and I was no threat at the time, mind you. Nobody gave me any advice. I had to figure it all out by trial and error. To this day, it being one of the very largest you know, personal injury firms, I still figure it out every day and I still try to improve and tweak and improve customer service and whatever it is. So I, there was only one entity I could look to and that was God. The, the other thing when I say God is my CEO, I get a lot of intuition and I don't know how and where and whatever. People tell me, where did you get that idea from? I say God. And for whatever reason, they think I am lying. They find it difficult to believe that I have a direct line with God and he does speak to me. It's more believable to them that another mortal, fallible mortal can, can advise me or give me ideas, but not God. But that has not been my path, Jack. To, to tell you that that has been my path would be a misstatement and a lie. You also regularly ask yourself when you have to make decisions, quote, what would Jesus do? And Jumana, then we say. <laughs> Jesus is a great person, okay? But if he was a businessman today with his standards and ethics, he would not be successful. How are you successful asking what would Jesus do? I'm not sure I agree with you. If Jesus were walking the earth today, I am not sure that he could not have a successful ethical business. And let me also tell you, because I am far from being a perfect human being, and I mean very far, and far from being a perfect Christian, and I mean very, very far. I ask that question often. I try. The funny thing is when I ask that question, Jack, I immediately get the answer. The clarity I get the minute I say, okay, what would Jesus do? I get it, and I get it so quickly, and the picture is so clear. Do I always follow it? I'm going to tell you a little secret. 
Maybe 95% of the time I do, but not 100% of the time. So I'm working on that other 5% of the time. We're with Jumana Kairos. Jumana, anyone who spends time with you walks away and says, wow, this woman is a God-centered, kind, optimistic person. How did you get to be so optimistic amongst all of these cases, which in many cases are awful stories? I am not optimistic 100% of the time. I am optimistic 95% of the time. I too am human, so like everybody else, sometimes I am shackled by the weight of what's in front of me. However, how can I read my Bible and how can I believe the word, the unchanging word of God and not be optimistic? Whatever is happening, that is God's will. And God wants very good things for his children. And when things aren't the very best, then I try to remind myself that there is a mission there for me. So you cannot be you cannot be a true Christian and not be optimistic. You cannot be a true Christian and read the Bible and believe what it says and not be optimistic. We're talking to Jumana Kairos, and she's a modern day Joan of Arc. <laughs> not at all. God centered, <laughs> a pioneer, iron will, courageous, driven, non conforming. I'm not sure you ride a horse, but other than that, a modern-day Joan of Arc. And I'm Jack Rasool, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. This is Anything is Possible. I'm your host, Jack Crisula, and we're with Jumana Kairos, who's the queen of legal advertising. And we all know her from her ads on billboards and transit buses. Jumana, after tens of thousands of personal injury cases, what have you learned about people? It hasn't been tens of thousands of personal injury cases. I don't think that's quite exact. But yes, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of personal injury cases. I haven't learned much about people that I didn't know going into it. Human beings, the human nature, human nature is the same. A lot of people, Jack, are hurting. I see them in my office after they have had a physical injury. But when I sit down with them, I realize that they are wounded people and they are broken even from before the accident. And it just boggles my mind how many broken people, how many down people, how many people are depressed, how many people see no hope, how, how many people are, are, you know, they resign to what they call their fate. These people come to me, and I can't tell you how many people sit in my office and cry. I can't tell you, and I've said that before, even I think on my website, how, how many people I pray with, because they are really in pain. I am not talking about the physical pain that brought them to my office. I am talking about the pain they had prior to their car accident, how rampant that is, how prevalent that is. If there's a listener tonight that says, boy, you are talking to me. Physically, I'm fine, but I am broken. I'm afraid. What do I do, Jomana? Pick up your holy book. If you are Christian, pick up the Bible. If you are Muslim, pick up the Holy Quran. If you are Jewish, pick up the Old Testament. All the answers are there, and only God will give you peace. No other human being will give you lasting peace. It's obvious you've done a pretty good job of surrendering to God. I try. Which remember, is very hard for all of us to do. Remember, I am human. 95%. 95%. Um, how does one learn to surrender to God? Because when you look to, to other human beings repeatedly and they fail you repeatedly, 
And when you hit real bottom, see, God has a way sometimes of sending things your way where you can't look anymore left or right and find the answers. God is a very jealous God. He's going to sometimes put things in your path to bring you closer to him. So your solution doesn't lie anymore on a human level. So you have to look to God. And that's how you get to know him. The Bible says, you know, the trials and tribulations that you go through are meant to purify you and get you close to God and to recognize and live the glory of God. We're talking to Jumana Kairos. Jumana, we And I hope I'm not sounding preachy. I am answering the questions the way I think about them. I hope I am not offending anybody who's listening. I am speaking my truth. Okay. We judge a book by its cover. And many of us judge you, or have judged you, by your billboards. Why the billboards? Ask God. (laughs) He inspired me to put them. And looking back, that was a genius of an inspiration. And now so many other people copy me and have their own billboards. I created a revolution. If I may very modestly say so, you can talk to the billboard companies. Their business is doing very well. (laughs) When, When you see yourself on a billboard or a bus... What do you think and say to yourself? Mm, I don't look anymore. (laughs) Um, We met a month or so ago for breakfast on a Saturday morning at the Townsend. Yes, sir. And we're sitting there, and a black gentleman walks by. And he says, quote, I'm sorry. I don't mean to stare at you. You just look familiar. How often do you get that, and what do you say? I do get that, but I try. If the other person pushes it further, I will truthfully answer. But if the other person leaves it at that, I will let it go. So what? You are very close to St. Jude's Hospital, which Danny Thomas was a huge... um, Benefactor and yes, but Danny Thomas, what is his real last name? K. Roos. Yes, sir. <laughs> so. And he is from my father's village in Lebanon. Tell us about St. Jude's Hospital. Oh, I think everybody loves St. Jude. It is so easy to feel for the children. It is so easy. St. Jude is a nonprofit organization that raises more than $900 million yearly. And I am such a very modest, very modest, infinitely modest part of that. Um, they, they, They give free treatment. They render free oncology cancer treatment for any child regardless of ability to pay or whether they're the president or the children of the present and i think saint jude is one of those charities that is beloved by everyone because of its mission it serves the children i think we all feel bad for children who came into life and you know now they have to deal with a cancer You mentioned earlier about this American dream. Anybody that spends time with you walks away very impressed and says, wow, here's a young lady who really believes in herself and follows her dreams and turns her dreams into reality. Great courage. Jumana, how do I get that? I got dreams, but I'm afraid to follow those dreams. Jack, I have said it, and because it is so simple, people ignore it, minimize it. Faith in God. Look, I came into this country 26 years ago, so I'm 48 years old, with my ex-husband, who was from a wealthy family, by the way. However, we both came with, are you ready to listen, $2,000. We rented an apartment to Yale University and Yale Medical School. We rented an apartment and we paid a down deposit uh, for one extra month uh, rent. And we had 
less than a thousand dollars to live on. And after I separated from my husband, I started from nothing. I started from zero. Anybody who says how, please tell them if this young girl from a developing democracy with English being her third language, having come into this country with $2,000, living in this country without any support, no relatives, no mother, no father, can go that far, so can you and so much more. And it's not because my IQ is off the chart. I am proud to say I think I am very smart. But that's not why I succeeded. The world is full of very smart people who, by their own standards or the standards of others, haven't succeeded, quote unquote. It's not because of my IQ. Some people may think that. That's not true. If they want to think that, so be it. But that would not be my reality. That would not be my truth. My truth is I have immense faith in myself. But ask me why. Where does that faith come from? Does it come from the fact that my IQ is Einstein's? The answer is no. Does it come from the fact that, you know, I, I had financial uh, abilities and, and, and any, any head up on life because of that? The answer is also a categorical no. My faith, my immense faith in myself comes from my faith in God. We are created in the image of God. Either we believe what you know, our holy scriptures say, or we don't, but it can be both ways. You can't just read it and not believe it. Either you read it because you want to believe it and then apply it and live it, or you don't read it. My faith in myself comes from my faith in God. I am his divine child. He watches over me. He wants to use me to do good. And that is why I succeed, period. It's that simple but that profound. That has been my secret, nothing else. We're talking to Jumana K. Rose, and I'm Jack Crisula, and this is Anything is Possible on News Talk 760 WJR. I'm Jack Crisula, this is Anything is Possible, and we're talking to Jumana K. Rose, who's fluent in four languages, several dialects of Arabic, French, Italian, and English. Jumana, Ross Perot, a very famous guy, says, it's a funny thing about people. When they get successful, very often they quit doing the very thing that made them successful. Most would say you've gotten very successful, yet you continue to work very hard and keep that love for people. Why? Because this is, this is my calling. This is my mission. And whether I do it by serving people in their car accidents or whether I do it by, you know, getting involved in community work and charity work, the essence is helping people. And... The law, the legal profession is a people helping profession. It's like medicine. It's a people helping profession. We forgot that as lawyers. We turned it into a business, yes. I mean, I have to be a businesswoman in addition to being a lawyer because I have to pay those, you know, ginormous advertising bills that I have. But uh, it's a people pro profession. It's a people helping profession. You mentioned in that last answer, it's, a, it's, a, it's your calling. I had Dennis Archer as a guest a few years ago. Phenomenal man. Yes. And he said that the practice of law is a calling. Yes. What do you mean by that? You know, this is so funny. Um, I was reading a very short article in the Detroit Free Press the other day with one of our very well-known attorneys, Steve Fishman, criminal attorney. And they were telling him, you know, what do you think of how about all these lawyer jokes and, and how people think that lawyers are scumbags and whatever. And he goes, funny you should say that because when people are in trouble, who are the first people or who is the first person they call? A lawyer. It's a helping profession. You go to a lawyer either to get you out of trouble or ideally to position you in such a way that you will not be in trouble down the road. 
yes, it is a people helping profession. The doctor who helps the patient heal is helping the patient and improving his quality of life and keep him safe for him and his family. But the lawyer who helps a client, whether it is by keeping him out of trouble or by drafting a contract to keep him out of trouble or by, you know, getting him justice or, as in my case, you know, getting him to wonderful doctors as well as getting him financial compensation, you are helping. You are helping people financially when you help people you can help them a lot. You can give them peace of mind. They don't have to worry about their bills anymore. They can hire help at home to help them take care of their ailments and their disabilities. Yes, it is. To be a lawyer is to help people get out of their problems or avoid getting into problems in the first place. A few years ago, I had Florine Mark on, another phenomenal lady. Yes, I know. Very successful. I, yes, I know her. In fact, I was with her daughter at the inauguration um, in Washington, D.C. a couple of days ago. Um, she says that with her business, P&L doesn't stand for profit and loss. P&L stands for people and love. Well, yes, of course. It, there is people and there is love and there is profit and there is loss. You know, you have to pay those bills at the end of the day. And I'm sure Ms. Ms. Marx would, would agree with that. They're not mutually exclusive. If you're asking what comes first, that's what distinguishes people. Do they put people first or do they put profits first? Well, then you know who you're dealing with. If you put profits before people, you're one kind of a human. And if you put people before profits, but profits is on the table too, you're another breed of a person. Shumana. Is the American dream still alive? Of course, Jack. Nothing has happened to the American dream. It's as alive as ever. If this young little blonde foreigner can make it, everybody can, and so much more, so much more. When I came into this country at age 22, I had to undo a lot of false thinking. That I, that I learned, you know, growing up that were not self-serving and were false because I came into this wonderful country and I saw the opportunities and I saw how it's all up to you. I had to do a lot, a whole, a great deal of undoing, as unlearning. Our, as our time winds down together, what advice would you give to our young listeners? The advice I would give to young and not so young listeners, because it's never too late, you see, Jack. Have faith in yourself and make sure your faith in yourself is not based on things like, you know, what family you come from, how much money you have in the bank, and how good your grades were in school. Make sure your faith comes from your religion, every religion, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Hold human beings in the highest regard and endow them with the most phenomenal God-given qualities. Go back to that. The second piece of advice, you men, <laughs> are keen on doing five-year plans and 10-year plans and whatnot. You have to see the whole thing from A to Z, the business plan kind of thing. Well, that's not my truth. You know what? I put one foot and I relied on God to reveal the next step for me. I read this somewhere. I don't take credit for it. A journey from here to California. You get in your car. It's dark at night. So you don't see the territory. Can you, Jack here from the Fisher Building Sea into California? No way. But you can see the next few feet, right? So you do that. Once you get toward the end of the next few feet, the next few feet after that will reveal themselves. It's like the beams, it's like driving in the dark from here to California. It's pitch black, but you have those beams. And that's the, the first step. Once you get over the first few feet, the beam will reveal to you the next few feet, and then the next few feet, and the next few feet. So you see, Jack, you don't have to see it all clearly. 
And a lot of people are paralyzed because they don't see it from A to Z. Take the first step and take it in faith. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? And trust that the next step will reveal itself to you. And you know what? If you fail, fail, uh, failure is relative. If you don't succeed in your next step, so what? Like a child who falls on her face thousands of times before she's sturdy on her feet and takes off and runs, you can learn, adjust, and move forward. The difference between us human beings and the child, the child isn't socialized yet, so has no shame. But we, we feel bad about ourselves when we, we beat ourselves, we, 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 we beat ourselves down when we fail, and we should unlearn that. Germana, your story is the epitome of, with God, anything is possible. Thanks a million. Oh, how beautiful. What an honor, Jack, and I thank you. Speaking of honor, today marks the 400th show of Anything is Possible. Wow. And I want to thank Mike Feasy and Steve Stewart, who gave me this opportunity. Tom O'Brien, who provides this. John Marshall, for many years, was the producer. Now, Mark Blackwell, Cindy Cooper. I want to thank the 400 guests, fabulous guests. I want to thank God. And lastly, you, the listeners. You make this show possible. Please join us next Sunday. Until then, I'm Jack Rasula. Thanks for listening. And make it a great week, because with God, anything is possible. Spohom. Believe in yourself.